Let's say you want to use Magento, but you want to have a custom Next.js front end. That's what we're going to take a look at in this video. So this is actually a Next.js app and you can see I have three images here. Those are actually coming from my Magento instance. So if I click on any of these images, I'm actually being taken to the product page. And here I have the information, a title as well as a price. So this product data is actually coming from my Mag Magento backend here. So here in the catalog, if I go to products here, uh, you can see here, I have those three products right here. So I'm able to manage my product data and other related data in Magento here, and then actually consume it in a Next.js website. This video has been made possible thanks to today's sponsor, which is Cloudways. Cloudways is actually a digital ocean company, and they make it very easy for you to set up and host a Magento server. So here in the Cloudways uh, dashboard, you can see I have created a server which is coming from DigitalOcean and it has automatically installed a Magento app for me. So that's what we're gonna take a look at. It will give you a way to log into the admin panel as well. Cloudways is managed hosting, so you get a lot of things out of the box. So for example, for the server here, you have these options for monitoring, uh, security, vertical scaling, so you can add more size backups and on one server you can add multiple applications right so here i only have one this magento app but we can add other apps here as well right if you're an agency or freelancer perhaps you may want to add multiple apps to the same server and by the way to get a good deal on cloudways make sure you check out the link in the description okay so i added a link there so if you want to sign up for cloudways you can use that link I'm going to remove all this setup here. We're going to start from scratch and I'll show you step by step how to set this up. You can find a link in the description for Cloudways in case you want to follow along. Okay, so here I have my Next.js app. It's just a very simple boilerplate here, just a home page. Right, so here in the code, you can see I just have an H1 here. And here I have a grid where we want to display those images, those product images. So we need to grab the data from a Magento instance into our Next.js app. And that's all I have here, nothing crazy going on. So we need to have a Magento instance. So it's very easy to spin that up here on Cloudways. So I'm gonna go here and here on Cloudways, I'm gonna launch a server. So here we can pick which application we wanna start off with on that server. So you can see, you can install WordPress, WooCommerce. I did these in other videos. You can also have a custom app and Laravel, but here we are gonna use Magento. So we can just, I'm just gonna call this example app and example server. Okay, so I already have a project. So here they do mention that if you use Magento with Elasticsearch and PHP in the configuration, that they recommend that you take a server of at least four gigabyte. Okay, so then we can pick the server provider actually. So Cloudways is a digital ocean company actually. So by default here, we're going to use a digital ocean server, but if you want, you can also pick a server from Vulture, Linode, Amazon or Google. I'm just gonna leave it at DigitalOcean. Yeah, so here for the size, I will use the four gigabyte option here and here location, that's fine with me, right? So remember, I can add multiple applications on this server technically. So uh, here it's gonna start off with just one. Okay, so it takes a couple minutes to provision the server. Okay, and after a couple minutes, that is finished. Now, if I click on the server here, you can see that you get a lot out of the box with Cloudways, right? So here for the server, you have some options here for monitoring, uh, security, vertical scaling in case you want to make it more powerful backups so that is the server now on the server you can have applications and by default what we just installed was one application but again you can have multiple so here we have the application and it will give you the actual URL right so here you're gonna get an actual Cloudways URL and you get all of the credentials also for admin panel for the database right here now you also get a lot out of the box here right? so you get a staging environment you have some options here for monitoring analytics and logs malware protection domain management ssl certificate backup and restore very important and many other things but let's actually go to the admin panel so we can actually add some products data all right so if you click on that link you will see the login screen for magento here and we also have these uh, credentials out of the box so i'm going to add and paste the password right here so then we can log into the admin panel all right so then here i am in my 
Magento admin panel. We can configure this as we want, but what we want to do for this example is just add some product data here to our catalog. Okay, so here we have an overview of our catalog. It's currently empty, so let's actually add those three products. Okay, I will just say that this is for this is the product for boot, it's gonna be $99. And let's see if we can add an image here. Yeah, so here images and videos. I will add an image here. I have one for boot. Okay, and then I will save this product. Okay, and then let me also add the other two. I will call this one dress shoes $65 and I'll add an image here as well and I'll add another one for sneakers we'll make that $50 and I'll add the image right here okay I'm gonna save that all right so now I have my product data here in Magento now if we actually want to have a user facing website by default Mag with Magento here you can view this here with Cloudways as well here for the application URL, right? So if you go here, you will see the default theme that you get with Magento, which is the Luma theme. Uh, here we can set up our store just like what we want. So that's something we could do, right? You can see this is the URL. Now we want to have our own Next.js website, right? So we're not going to use this as the front end that consumes the data. We're going to consume the data from the Next.js website. So how do we do that? How can we get that catalog uh, products data into our Next.js website? Well, Magento has a REST API. So remember Magento is part of Adobe. So if you Google for Magento REST API, you will find this uh, page. And actually we can we can do pretty much, we can do a lot of things here, but what we are interested in here is product. We wanna get the product and they show you that you can use, so here they actually show you what it actually should be. So it should be a REST default V1 product, but what should be the base URL? Well, that actually should be uh, whatever we get here, right? So here, what you see in the URL, this is gonna be the base URL, and then you need to tack on this to that base URL, and that's when you get the products data in, that's when you should get it in JSON format, but we do need to get uh, some authentication here. So let's actually try doing that in the code because it's a bit easier than adding the access token uh, like that. So let's actually go here. So here on the home page, we want to fetch that product data. So we can mark the component as async. This is a server component. I'm using Next.js here. So you can do an await directly in here. You can fetch data directly in here. So this is the fetch call I'm going to make. Now I do find that in practice, you may want to add a search param here. So here search criteria, we want to get all the products here on the home page. So we need an access token actually. So let's quickly create an access token. So let's go to system integrations. And here we're going to integrate our Next.js website with the Magento instance here. So we're going to add a new integration. I'll just say first and it wants us to use the password. So I can just grab that here from Cloudways and paste that right here and save. Okay. And actually before we click on save here, you also need to go, you also need to go to API here and you need to specify which level of access the app that our Next.js app should have, right? So in this case, we want to get the products data. Actually, I will just select everything here in catalog. So then I can click on save. Okay. And then by default status is inactive. Let's actually make it active. Okay. So here we say allow. And here we get an access token and some other tokens as well. We're going to use this access token here. I'm going to copy that. And I actually want to use a environment variable for this. So I created a .env.local file and we're just gonna have one Magento access token. I'm gonna paste that right there. So I needed to add one more thing here to make it work. We had to go to, I will go to configuration here and here under services, we have the web API settings. So Magento web API. So here we have allow anonymous guest access. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say save config. And actually also we wanna use OAuth, and then we want to go to uh, consumer settings, access tokens to be used as standalone bearer tokens. That's essentially what we're doing here. So I'm going to mark this as yes as well. Uh, and then for the authentication, we have the options here. We're going to say headers and here we can say authorization and that will be bearer. Yeah. So here we want to use that access token, right? So that will give us a result. Let's say const rest and we're going to get it in JSON format. So we're going to parse that from JSON into normal JavaScript. And let's actually log this to see what we get. I'm going to open up my terminal and I see I made a typo here actually. So of course should be without the template literal. So I'm going to save this. And now you can see when I save or if I just refresh here, you can see I am seeing some data here. So that looks good. I am seeing the actual product data, right? So now from my Next.js app, 
I have found a way to actually retrieve the product data. So now, of course, we actually want to display those images on the home page. So we have these items now. You can see we have a SKU and we have a price and we also have media gallery. So basically the images, they also have custom attributes, which may, which may also have the images and other related data. Let's actually use that now to actually render some images here on the home page. So right here in this grid. OK, so here in the grid, I just have a div for each of the three products. I'm actually wrapping it in a link here as well so we can click on it and actually go to the product details. Now here for the image, I'm using uh, what we get in the data. And here I'm using that base URL from Cloudways. Right, so that's what we have right here. Now I do find that I need to use media catalog products to make that work. But if you do that, we will still have an issue here because in Next.js, you need to specify that you want to use a certain for images. So let's go to next config. So here I added the Magento Cloudways uh, URL. So now if I refresh here, let's see if that works. And now indeed we get three images here that are coming from my Magento backend. Okay, so that's pretty cool, I think. Now let's actually make it work so that if I click on this, that we can actually see the individual product data. So for this, we need to add another route to our app here. So we have slash products and then boots, basically the, the SKU or the name of the product. So how do we add that here? Well, we can just create another folder, right? We can call it uh, product or products. And then in there, we have a dynamic route. So this is gonna be uh, SKU, let's say a SKU or name. And then we will have one page.tsx for all the possible SKUs, right? That's why it's dynamic, because it could be many different ones. All right, so what we want is we need to know what's in the URL, right? Because it could be boots, it could be sneakers, it could be any SKU. And based on that, we need to render the correct information, right? So that's what we have right now. How did I do that? Well, Next.js gives you the params that, that are part of the URL, right? So whatever name you gave it here in Square Brackets, that's how you can then access it. So here we call it SKU. So then we need to get the actual individual product data from our Magento instance. So again, I can use the Cloudways URL that we get. I could also put this in an environment variable so we can easily use this in, the, in multiple places. And then I added this part just like before, but now I also added this queue to the URL. I still added the authorization information here. I can remove this. We get the actual data. And what are we outputting here? We're just outputting the image, right? So again, using the media URL here, and I can use that data to get the actual final part of that URL. We're using the name of the products, right? Just boots and also the price here, which I get right here. Okay, so that is how we can get the individual as well as of course all the other product data from Magento into our Next.js app. So I think that's pretty cool. So in case you wanna use Magento with Next.js, this is one way of making that work. All right, let's talk a little bit about some optimizations that we can make. So uh, of course this page that we have, this individual product page, right now, whenever I go here, it needs to be computed again, right? So this fetch call needs to be made and the HTML has to be generated and then it will go to the user. And that's not really efficient, right? Ideally, our pages are statically generated as it's called, which means that the HTML is already built during the build, right? So let me actually run a build. So if I uh, do npm run build, when we're creating an optimized version of our app, we're already creating static pages for everyone, for every page, for every page by default, actually. So you can see the home page is actually statically generated. So the HTML is already generated right now. So it's good to go whenever somebody's coming there. However, that's not the case for when you have a dynamic route because we could technically have millions of different pages, right? So Next.js cannot generate that right here. So here, this is dynamically generated, right? So this is server rendered on demand. So whenever now there's a request to this page, that whole uh, component has to be run again and we're gonna make another fetch call, right? Not really efficient. So ideally, we can of course also statically generate some of these product pages. So you can actually export a function called generate static param. So here you can just specify essentially for which SKUs you want to generate the HTML upfront. So here we can essentially, we wanna do it for all the products. So I'm just gonna get all the products from my Magento instance, right? Just like what we did before. And here I'm parsing it as JSON. Now here, what you can do, what you what you have to do is you have to return these queues, only the queues that need to be generated because Next.js will pass that here as the input to that component and run that during the build. So here it will, will map over each one and just return the skew. So you get an array of objects with the skew. That's how it needs to be structured. So if we do this and run a build again, you can see now generating static pages, now it's eight because we actually have three products. Yeah, so now you can see here, it has also statically generated these three pages, right? So 
now when you go to slash boot html has already been pre-generated right now so that's one optimization that you may want to take a look at all right so now when somebody goes here the html is already finished it's already there waiting for them so we can immediately serve the html from some cdn let's say we do not have to run all the code in here again now what happens if we for example change something here on the back end so here in the catalog in product i may actually change the price of the boots let's say and here i can just change the price to 50 dollars save now i'm changing it but if somebody goes here they will still see 99 dollars because the html is you know is already so here we get into right so static site generation ssg is essentially what we did here but you also want to do isr right all these buzzwords which means you want to bust the cache and generate it again when there is actually an update so you may want to take a look at webhook so if there is a webhook it can send a request to your Next.js app and we can set up a route handler so we can actually process that. So here we can call that whatever we want, but very often people use API and then uh, revalidate and then here we can actually process it, right? So webhook is typically a post request. We can sort of open up our server for that right here. We can get the actual body. Make sure you actually get verify who the webhook is coming from, and then you can revalidate some page, right? So here, you know, if you have a list of products and you change the, the name of one of the products, well, that products page needs to be regenerated rather right, revalidated. So you get a revalidate path function here from next cache. There is also revalidate tag so one of those two and that's how you could bust that cache and regenerate essentially that html and so those are two optimizations you want to take a look at now here in cloudways we can also add some optimizations so here i'm using a flexible app but cloudways also offers what they call autonomous app so here they have some more advanced features uh, for mission critical websites as they call it and it's built on kubernetes right so that's something that you may want to take a look at as well more powerful hosting. So that's something that uh, could be good for your use case as well. And Cloudways now also offers what they call a new malware protection add-on. So typically, traditionally, there are some issues with security plugins. So you may want to take a look at malware protection add-on powered by Immunify 360 as well. In any case, I want to thank Cloudways for sponsoring this video. I would say check them out. You can find a link in the description. I'm Wesley, by the way. I'm a brand ambassador for Kind, also a paid sponsorship. I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps you set up Next.js with a Magento instance. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.